joining us right now, Karthik Ramakrishnan, a professor of public policy and political science at the University of California, Riverside. Uh, so, Karthik, you, you just put out a new report, and, and you're looking into 2012, and it's the data specific to can they swing certain swing states? Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Richard. So, looking ahead of 2016, we probably can expect, like in 2012, states like Nevada and Virginia. Now, these are states that people might not typically think of states where there are a lot of Asian Americans, but in <coughs> fact, there's a significant uh, group of Asian Americans there, and they're growing pretty fast. And we know in the last couple of election cycles that elections tend to be very close in these states. So these tend to be very hard fought, and there's a lot of outreach efforts that we saw in 2012 in these two states, add Florida, North Carolina, uh, Colorado. Right. Uh, I think Asian Americans will have potentially more impact now than we did in 2012. All right, so I was looking at the numbers you have there. The question might be then, okay, where are they trending? 2014, at least the midterms, are showing they went more to the right. During the 2012 and 2008 elections, they went more to the left. What are we seeing for 2016? Are they following Latino American and African American trends? It's a very, it's probably one of the biggest questions heading into the cycle. So if mm -hmm. you Look at the trend over the last 20 years. It seems pretty clear that they're shifting and shifting pretty solidly uh, towards the Democratic Party. 2014 is a bit of a it's a bit of a toss up because midterm ele elections tend to be low turnout affairs, uh -huh. and this certainly was true last time. So less than a third of Asian Americans voted in the 2014 elections, and we knew going into it that. Uh, Republicans were much more enthusiastic than Democrats on it. So uh, what will it be this time around? I think the key, what you saw with uh, Hillary Clinton, was to try to drive up enthusiasm among, uh, among Asian American voters to try to get out the Democratic or Democratic-leaning voters. Yeah, so to At our the same time, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but you have, pe but you have people like um, uh, Jason Chung and others at the Republican National Committee who've been doing outreach efforts after 2012. You right. have the Growth and Opportunity Report. Right. And after that, you've had a lot of efforts to try to run local candidates and to grow the party uh, in places like Southern California, right. in places like Northern Virginia. Yeah, yeah. One of the issues that, uh, that we know uh, typically is consistent among Asian American voters, in addition to things like economy and the jobs, is education. So that is an issue that both parties could try to uh, try to drum up support among Asian Americans in terms of their outreach. Mm -hmm. But the key is to try to figure out what is it about education. Uh, we mm -hmm. know that Asian American voters, based on the surveys that we've done and others have done, care about things like college debt, affordable higher education, and good quality public education when it comes to uh, K through 12. So what can both sides offer in terms of improving educational opportunities will be important to see. Uh, to our uh, another issue is health care. And this is where it might be a bit of a challenge for Republicans in 2016. Right. Uh, Asian Americans supported the Affordable Care Act. When we asked about it back in 2008, they supported universal health care across the board among Asian American groups. So if someone's going to run on a platform of repealing Obamacare uh, or the Affordable Care Act, I'm not sure how well that's going to play with the Asian American population. What is the socioeconomic bracket for the, this population, and is it different in between Virginia, Nevada, Arizona? And are mm -hmm. are they how well they off or down. not? Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, what we've seen is that even among the well-off uh, Asian American groups, uh, they tend to support bigger government, more taxes, uh, more spending. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in many ways, if you look at that slice of the population. People might be surprised to think, why would a high-income group support higher taxes? Well, there are other groups like this. So if you look at Jewish American voters, among higher-income Jewish American voters, they support higher taxes, more government spending, the social safety net. So um, even though class matters when it comes to voting patterns, there's actually pretty good consistency in terms of even among uh, higher income brackets, people supporting the Democratic Party. We'll have to leave it there. Karthik Ramakrishnan from UC Riverside, thank you for joining us this morning.